it's funny how they think like people like us, you're grifters or you're trying to make money off this. Like, yeah. no, it's cost us. It's cost it's me tremendously. A hundred percent. It's forced me to go in different so directions. That, yeah. But, but you also, it forced you to become, uh, Honest. to give you the backbone of a human being for who you were and people love you for it. And you as well. People come up. To you, well, thank you. People come up to me and hug me in airports yeah. and say, if you see Jim Brewer, Give him a hug for me. <laughs> Jim, Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. Hey, this is Jim Brewer. What's up, Mike? What's happening, man? You're looking good, buddy. It's good to see the back of your head again. Hey, man. It's a pleasure. <laughs> we got a great guest on today. Uh, Rob Schneider is coming on. Super excited, Rob. Yes, I still have big bags under my eyes. I don't know if you figured that out yet. But yeah, big old bags. I want to thank all uh, the listeners that have sent me eye bag cream. Eye bag have, cream? Yes. At the Trooper weekend, I literally had uh, Heather and... Um, one other really special fan, and they gave me creams. And they're like, we heard you talking about the bags under your eyes, and we felt terrible, and we just want to put a little bit under your eye. And, like, and I, I think, yes, it does come a little bit from my dad. My dad had big bags under his eyes, but they weren't dark. Like, I got dark, dark circles. Like, I, I don't know if I'm just self-conscious or I need much better lighting. I'm not going to wear makeup, but I will tell you this. Since our production meetings, we have some segments that we're working on that I'm super stoked. The, the next bunker is going to be, I, I, I think it's going to be one of my all-time favorite bunkers. We're already working on it. I'm already talking to Shaka. I'm also going to do like a, a, maybe a little call to arms, meaning all of you to send me information on what we're going to take one subject and just, just plead it as a case. Just plead as a case instead of all these different things all over the place. But we'll we'll do that and we'll see where it goes. So uh, with that said, do have some big dates coming up. Now, I just played, I just worked out material in Charlie Goodnights in Raleigh, North Carolina. Staff is incredible. Room is electric. I really want to thank Charlie Goodnights for letting me come in there and, and try some stuff out. And Mike has all that material. We're going to get some of that out there on the internet sooner than later because some of it is uh, more topical. A lot of times I do stand up, the first couple minutes is more topical. Um, you know, also, I should say this. So we have some dates coming up. The new stuff is crushing, crushing. Um, Dunedin, or as, as Mike loved calling it, Dunedin. Uh. Dooned in Florida. Um, this this date in Dunedin. This is kind of this is a homecoming for me. So it's going to be a little something special. I have my good friend Lou Angel Wolf that I'm bringing on. Those of you who really know me, read my book. Um, you'll know how deep uh, the spiritual side goes with a guy named Lou Angel Wolf. And you know how much he's meant to me in my life. And when I first started doing stand up again, I first started in Long Island at a high school and then parents moved to Florida. And while I was living in Florida, you know, it took me a couple of years before I figured out, yeah, I want to, I want to go back into this. And I would, I would go to Clearwater, which is, I, I was living in a place called Palm Harbor, Florida, which still exists. And right next to it was Dunedin, Florida. And I spent a bunch of time in Dunedin, Florida. My sister worked in Dunedin, God rest her soul. And we have, I have a lot of history with Dunedin. So that date, Dunedin, Florida, uh, can you make the, yeah, here we go, is going to be a big one. So get your tickets now. You can go to jimbrew.com. Just click that on October 7th. The following week, I'm at the center of Deltona. Those tickets are going really, they're going quickly as well. Uh, and then the rest is when I start really, really touring. So the Dunedin and Deltona are probably going to be your best, 
like you're going to see a whole different side of Jim Brewer where once we're on the tour side, you're going to, you know, it's going to be much more fine tuned machine, but I love doing the dates like the Dunedin show coming up October 7th and October 14th. I highly recommend seeing those because I'm going to be on fire. I'm on fire every show. I don't even need to toot my horn, but I love doing, I love doing stand up. And then we're going on a big tour. I mean, it was a lot of October, November, December uh, dates. Um, Jacksonville, Florida is going to be coming up in January. So Capitol Theater, Georgia, Dothan, Alabama, Naples. It's almost, it's sold out already. Uh, yeah. So go on jimbrew.com. You can see all these dates. If you can't, if you, it's, am I the only one that every day goes, what is going on? What, 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 what is going on? And what I mean by that is the news tries to tell us that we, what was it a week or two ago? We lost a military plane, an F-35. Just, hey, um, I don't know if you saw it, but um, there was F-35 might have been flying by. Right, did you guys see it? Does anyone believe this? Right, I mean, again, does anyone believe that's what it is? So you're telling me. Like, first of all, have you ever heard an F-35? F-35 goes by. It's like... <laughs> People come running out like, oh, did you see it? Where it go? Did you see it? And then they do a phone call, and, and, and the 911 phone call is like, yeah, um, this guy landed in my yard, and um, he, he jumped out of a plane, and um, so we need an ambulance. Oh, hold on, he wants to talk to you. Okay, it's, hi, I'm the pilot. Uh, ma'am, I need I need an ambulance. Who's approving this? Is, is there anyone that's sit home going, did you hear that the pilot? Did? First of all, if you're military, are you not first saying, hi, this is Lieutenant uh, Colonel uh, James Brewer. I was ejected from a plane in the middle, of, and, and I need to, aren't you contacting the military? Don't you have a walkie-talkie? If I'm hanging out in my house, and all of a sudden, some guy just lands in the yard, I'd be like, what the, what the, what are, you, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we found the debris. And they show, like, like Bigfoot, they just show something in the distance. When they're like, oh, wait, this is your news trying to tell you this. Not one military guy came out and said, yeah, no, nah, this, this is not. What is going on? <laughs> You know, I made a video. All I said was, you know, I had some fans that said, hey, man, during COVID, hey, uh, your your venues are asking me to show my card that I got the and and um, I, I would have never bought tickets. And I went, I didn't know that. I didn't agree to that. So I started canceling gigs and I just simply made a video. And I just basically said, hey, man, I'm not playing any venues that force the I'm not doing it. Why, why to laugh now? You got to get, you got to, you got to get that. No. And it it was more elaborate than that. And then the next thing, you know, you know, my age is like, oh, this is, this is, this is bad. So what's bad? Because it's getting a lot of traction. It's going to be on the news. So like, the video? Yeah. And then sure enough, three, four days later, you know, I have the, the, um, the, the warlocks. Jim Brewer was washed up at night. I mean, if this is what he needs for a tent, whatever they, whatever their drums are. Um, out of all the people that called, this guy called me. Rob Schneider called me, and it was, and I gotta say, it was, um, it it was a very. What I loved was this wasn't Rob Schneider. Oh, it's the guy from the movies. Oh, it's the guy from SNL. No, this was Rob Schneider, the intellect, the human being, the father, the husband, the 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 man of knowledge. And he had a conversation that I'll never forget. It was very telling. It was extremely insightful. And it was healing. So... Uh, and and you saw him. You saw him putting a special out and all that. And I'm super stoked to have him here. Uh, please welcome Mr. Rob Schneider. That was a very long intro. I apologize. You're sitting there waiting. That was a nice intro. Let me turn the light on here. First of all, 
I just want to say that never happened. You can't prove it. <laughs> I don't want the pharmaceutical industry coming after me. I think that's uh, you imagined it, and I, I, I don't, I don't think it really happened, Jim. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> We're entertainers. We, 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 we read scripts all the time, Rob. You know that. Where are you? You at home? I'm, you look exhausted. I'm at home with my little puppy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I got little kids. I got little kids yeah. and uh, take them to school and then I'm trying to write. But I will tell you, I really felt for you because you were just being a man and saying what you thought. But there are things and like uh, Noam Chomsky talks about it and he's like, a, you, know, you can't say you are a complete right winger if you quote Noam Chomsky. But he says Americans are allowed to discuss, uh, you know, to have real you know, I, I, he says vociferous or some, but really like, uh, um, they're allowed to have intense conversations yeah, and ask a lot of questions about a limited, narrow number of things. And if you step outside that, mm. you're going to allow yourself, you're putting yourself in a position to be violently attacked. Um, and that's why I like the difference between you see hate pieces on uh, right now. Oh yeah, on Robert Robert Kennedy. Oh, and you'll see hate pieces on on Trump, but you won't see it on like Pence, like Mike Pence, because Mike Pence, even though they don't like him, he's still part of the establishment that's acceptable. A cr- absolutely. And when you step out outside of that acceptable establishment, and you begin to question things that um, that aren't allowed, I mean, you take a look at. Um, as I'll back into this, you take a look at like um, Assange, who is in, um, uh, who's been in jail now for over, I think it's for nine years now. He's in Balmoral, which is like where they put terrorists and murderers, and he's there um, because he decided to uh, expose um, real government malfeasance. Uh, to where, uh, you know, war crimes, really. Mm-hmm. And the United States um, doesn't admit certain things, and this guy released it. And so even people in the mainstream press don't defend him because the press isn't like the press was. Like when you and I were, you know, very young in Vietnam, the press was trying to expose war and trying to, um, it would supported people, working class people. Now the press really is funded by billionaires um, and now they espouse the government talking points and pharmaceutical and military industrial complex talking points. So in the middle of this, um, Jim, you decided to uh, throw caution to the wind <laughs> and say, you know what, maybe, you know, I don't need any money from television. Maybe I don't need money from movies. Maybe I can just, you know, wing it. Yep. Uh, and and you did it. Um, the, the thing that's not allowed to be talked about is the is the fact that pharma really does have such an incredible stranglehold on um, on the United States in particular, but uh, the Western world. Um, it is mind boggling when you look at the actual numbers and. I got attacked years ago, so I felt I was in a position to uh, to speak with you. I mean, you have the pharmaceutical companies spend 85% of all spending for television, uh, the, you know, the traditional television, like you're talking about in cable TV, um, still the, the broadcast television, up to 85% and internet commercials and is 85% on a non-election year is going to be pharma and it's that it's that big yep so so you are really um it's what funds also every not just federal uh politician everybody at the state level too at the state uh you know whether it's california state legislature i learned the assembly the state senators uh they also get the majority of their funding from uh pharmaceutical companies and the lobbyists are extremely effective uh, in putting in policy because they they also fund the California Medical Board, and then they actually actually fund the um, 
the regulatory boards. Like if you want to have a drug, a new drug, you would submit it to the FDA. If let's say you're Merck, you submit it to the FDA and it's a $50,000 application fee for a new drug. So in essence, you have um, the pharmaceutical companies are directly funding these regulatory boards. And then you have what Robert Kennedy and I, what Robert Kennedy talks about, the only public person talking about it, is this revolving door between the agency uh, that is uh, the public agency, the FDA, CDC, the NIH, uh, the National Institute of Health, you have these revolving door between government, regulatory boards, and industry, and it goes back and forth. So in the middle of this uh, that's been happening, now um, you have what you walked into, the trap that you walked into was that they can make drugs and eventually they go like Vioxx, which killed at least 50,000 people. Uh, it was a heart medication that killed pe people um, that my mother took for a while. And she, luckily she didn't die from it, mm. but uh, she was having problems. And then they pull that right off. And that's just the cost of doing business, killing 50,000 people. But even that drug, they made money on it, even paying off. It's just the cost of business. But the thing that they can make money and that, that never ends is that becomes as evergreen is vaccines. Mm -hmm. That is the goal. And in 1986, they passed this Childhood Safety Vaccine Act, which was um, because what happens was the pharmaceutical companies were getting sued so much that they went to the Reagan administration and said, we're going to get out. We're not going to make these anymore hmm. and uh, unless you give us, uh, unless you take away our liability. And so it wasn't an easy thing for Reagan to sign, but he eventually did sign it. Yeah. And I don't know if you regret it or not. So what happened was that these were now evergreen. In other words, these drugs would make money forever. So as long as it was on the childhood safety, childhood schedule vaccine, mm. you were no liability. You can't, the government pays for you. You don't. Robert Kennedy said something. I don't, I don't know if he said on Rogan or whatever, where he said in a couple of places where he said he asked Fauci and one other, I forgot who, who the other one was, to show me all the test results. And this isn't, this isn't uh, for YouTube watching, whatever. This isn't a, a fact check thing. It's a hundred percent fact. And, yeah. and he said, show me. And at first the way he explains the Fauci was like, oh, yeah, me, I, I got it here. And he could never show him. And eventually he called him and said, we don't have any results that any vaccine can prove that it works and it, it, it yes. i couldn't believe the state when he put that statement out it was and then the next thing you know he's in front of the government you know they're like you how dare you <laughs> even destroy him he, he's he said uh, the f-bomb when he he was alone and look he's alone and he's a quack he's a quack it's funny how they think like people like us you're grifters or you're trying to make money off this thing. Yeah. Huh? It's cost us. It's cost me it's tremendously, a hundred percent. It's forced me to go in different so directions. The, yeah. But, but you also, it forced you to become, uh, Honest. to give you the backbone of a human being for who you were and people love you for it. And you as well. People come up. To, well, thank you. People come up to me and hug me in airports yeah. and say, if you see Jim Brewer, give him a hug for <laughs> me. Thank him. It's just you, you, you guys only know that kind of thing. But I, I felt for you because it is a, a crashing when it does happen, when the pharmaceutical industries close the thing and when the newspapers go after you. And then you did it at a specific time, which was more dangerous than truthfully when I did. It was, you know, we got attacked, Dr. Drew and I, because we were both saying in April, in the beginning of April 2020, yeah. like, wait a minute. Before we start shutting down society and closing schools, yeah. masking infants, can we, can we really do, is this really, where is the proof that this COVID, this coronavirus and all flus and all colds, colds and flu, these are coronaviruses, cold viruses are coronaviruses. So where is the proof that this is as dangerous as everyone is saying? Before we start shutting everything down, let us really look at that and let us look at uh, some alternatives. Let us, uh, let's put the people most vulnerable. This is what we thought. Well, let's put the people most vulnerable, protect them and not shut society down. 
And that was basically been confirmed. But at that time, the New York Times was a guy named uh, Peters. I'll even tell you his, um, New York his name. Times. I think it was New York Times. I know. So this guy did a hit piece on us that was like a New York Times, like Corona. I want to tell you his name so you can give him credit for this. Jeremy W. Peters. And the, the reason I have it out is because I'm, I'm doing a retort to him with Dr. Drew. We're doing a, a kind of a three and a half year follow up. <laughs> but I felt I felt for you because literally uh, it just what the, the idea is to make things so difficult for you that you'll shut up and hopefully apologize and just say, stay out of it. And I've talked to other people, other celebrities who've been slammed publicly for this. And it's scary because. You know, the thing that you and I have, uh, besides integrity, <laughs> is I think it's a nice little thing to have, uh, to care about other human beings, you know. Um, we do have a hu unique advantage over just other actors and the, the fact that you are, they can't stop you from being hilarious. You know, I'm watching you beforehand and like, you're you're undeniably funny. Thank you, Robert. That, that just doesn't. They're just not that they, they can't say, well, they can say you're a crazy anti-vaxxer. Sure. But they can't say you're funny. Sure. And the people who say that are not telling the truth. They're lying. And you can always go somewhere to any city that knows you or hears about you and go, yeah, I heard that guy's funny. And they can pay to see you and they'll laugh their ass off. And that is something that, that that's a little bit of like, uh, you know, they can't destroy us completely. Correct. You know, years ago, we'd go on tour and we'd be in the back, you know, where we smoking dope. Yes, we smoking dope. And we'd, and we'd watch, we'd, <laughs> no, we'd, no. we'd watch no. Bob Marley. Do do yeah, yeah. We, my, my friends and I would watch Bob Marley interviews. And it was part of also a discovery of the simple part of humanity. And he would say, I remember he said something that there was two things that he said. One, I remember exactly what he said. He went, all governments are illegal all governments are illegal and then another guy tried to discredit him well you're not educated what do you th what do you say to all the people that say you're you're not educated or um, and he said he said my mom teach me love and respect if i was educated i'd be a damn fool and wow that really blew my mind and what 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 blows me away, Rob, and maybe I'm going off topic here, is I always wonder, how do we get back to simple humanity, which was just the neighborhoods, you know each other. The beginning of time, I know it sounds crazy, but I love going to Africa. I go I go to Tanzania, I go to South Africa, I go to Kenya. And what, it's on me where to go. I'm going to take the kids. I'll, kill all of it. I'll take some. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, hook you, yeah, I'll hook you up. It's, it's, you got you to tell me because I want to do a safari. But you, can I just jump yeah. in? Because the king, the, the somebody once said this: the kings and queens are just the murderers and thieves that got away with it. That's it. And what? That's, that's why when you walk into where the king does, you have to bow. Yes. And they have the guy ah, with swords right there to cut your head off. Interesting. They have to show that you're not armed. That's it. So, and, 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 but this is what blows me away about people in, in general. If I were to go to mm -hmm. your, your store and your store failed horrendously on so many things, this government has failed horrendously. If, if we're hiring you, we have the right to just go in and remove you. You, you're not working. You, you, you're not going to tell me we're going in your crane. You're not going to tell me I need to take a shot. You're not going to tell you what. You need to get out, which is one of the reasons why I truly believe January 6th, where they want you to be like, this is the worst thing ever. No, the worst thing ever is what you're doing to all of us. That is the worst thing ever. Yeah. What you're doing, that is 10 times worse than anything like that. I mean, January 6th was the only was the only uh, coup in the history of uh, coups where they tried to overthrow the government without weapons, just with uh, just, just people breaking wearing windows, horns and so. stuff. Yeah. It was it was awful, and I, I I don't think it's a proud moment, but I don't think it was a true takeover. Me either. And I, I think the fact that the fact that it was a um, that, that that you can't get honest answers 
from the Justice Department and how many oh. FBI guys were there. <laughs> what did they do? And how did this guy Epps only get like a, a misdemeanor charge? So you have a de-educated population. Now, what happened, you and I, um, I think I might be a little older than you. It was in during when you and I were in high school, maybe you were in junior high, where they stopped teaching civics in school. You, go, you know what? We don't need to teach Americans. It was in the late 70s, early 80s. By 1980, it had gone on out of the uh, high school system, uh, the high school educational program. Uh, it was no longer taught how our own government works. Civics was taken out. And I don't think that's by accident. I think you want to, people don't want to know, I would say the powers that be want you to know, want to keep you ignorant and they don't really want you to have any control. And they realize that people go into the ballot box and they're just going to go and they vote very tribally and they're going to vote. It's a provincial thing. Well, we just, this is our guy. Let's just, you know, do what we're told. But at the same time, there's things that we can learn. Can we learn about human evil? Can we learn? And there's a really interesting book that came out about maybe 15, 12 years ago uh, for your, if your listeners. It's an easy read. It's a short read. It doesn't have big words in it. Yep. It's called The Sociopath Next Door. Ooh. And it's written by a liberal intending, a liberal in intending person who is actually just a, more of a humanist than an actual, uh, which uh, liberalism is illiberal at this point to me. But I, I found that to be a very good book because what it's talking about, and M. Scott Peck, the guy who wrote The Road Less Traveled, really the first really important um, self-help book about basically you don't teach people how to be a good human being or how to grow as a human being. Right. We don't teach that in school. No. We need to. What is a good human being? What does it take? And how do you listen to another human being? And how do you listen to yourself? And what do you want out of your life? And what do you, do you want to repeat the same mistakes that happened? Or do you want to, or do you want to recognize them and grow? And do, so that was M. Scott Peck. I was very lucky to meet him when I was a younger man. He wrote a book on on evil, uh, combating human evil called um, People of the Lie. And it's another short, easy read, and that's what I need. So do <laughs> I. My attention span. You may get me to start <laughs> reading. I'm not going to lie to you. you you've thrown out so a the People of the guys, Lie. So, okay. People of the Lie. Say it again. <laughs> people of the Lie and The Sociopath Next Door. That's, those are two different books. And what you really do learn is that there are people that are born with no conscience. And that they are, if they get, it's one thing if they just cause havoc in their own life and become whatever it is that they, they are, whatever they, whether they do their drug addict, they become drug addicts and they, they just leech off their family until the family's broken. Right. And then it just, the family's sick too, because they're enabling them. Um, or there's people that get in society or somebody that you work with that is just not a good person, that is just destructive and trying to destroy you and just destroy people because they feed off of that in some weird way. Right. So and you have to call these people, what happened, you know, Again, I'm sorry, we don't have time to do all this stuff, but I've had a lot of time, a lot of time on these flights, Jim. Going no, I love it, man. I love, a lot of, I love this. We had the separation. We had the, the age of enlightenment because there became a time in Christianity became so powerful that it didn't allow for doubt. Just like we weren't allowed to question the coronavirus. We weren't allowed to, we weren't allowed to doubt right. because the new mythology, the new, the, the new religion of the day doesn't allow doubt. You have to just... These are the experts. This is the newest aristocracy. This is the, we have to listen to them because they have letters under, after their name. It's P H D D U. and then shut up. We got, these are the, this is the new aristocracy. You got to listen. They're the experts. You're just a dummy. Right. You have to just shut right. up and do what you're told and roll, roll up your sleeve and, and get the shot. Right. So you had, um, so that's the new form of it. But it's, if you look back historically, you can see that, um, when Copernicus and Galileo discovered that the center of our solar system wasn't the earth, like the Catholic church was saying, it was the sun and they could prove it because they can go over here and look at this planet and look at this and the moon seems to be doing this and this other planet seems to be doing this, and that it's not circling around the earth. It's circling around the, this, well, the largest mass in our solar system, which would seem to make sense that that would be the thing that everything circles around. That's right. And so he said, okay, well, and then because of that, Galileo was almost killed and went off and was imprisoned in Germany for that. And um, so at that point, science had to move away from this theological standpoint and had to be, so, but they basically said, 
uh, and they had to develop. So when somebody's evil and does something bad, and theologically, in a religious way, you would say that he's evil right. if he kills people. Now, in, in the science and medicine, you know, you would have to say, well, he's sick, but they're one in the same. Yes. So that kind of um, devolution where, where, they, where they had to separate to, to survive, that happened. And that's part of, so we're dealing with that, with that new, uh, the ramifications of this new religion. But it's still the same, the same thing comes back to this um, point of roughly their, you know, and this is just psychological. You know, they're, they're not, I can't say they're actual doctors or they're wearing white, white coats when you go see them. Correct. But they think from their research that they have done, and this is research of the last, the last half century, was that 4% roughly have no, people have no conscience. These are sociopathic. And if they get in positions of authority, <clears throat> like Prime Minister Trudeau, they can do great damage. And they could do things that are, because they have no conscience. Um, that's when you can get, you know, murders and you can get mass murders and you can get people who are um, locked down for months on end. And then, but it's a good thing that these things, at least if people can, re can recognize uh, the people and start to expose them, as these are sociopathic tendencies, maybe we shouldn't reelect them to the well, state, to the I, to the governor in, in Michigan, Whitmer. You know? All of them, New York, all of them. But I think the issue with that is no one trusts voting anymore. I don't. I mean, I never trusted voting. I'm like, so you're telling me we go in a black box and we press the thing and you're going to tell me who won? Sure. Okay. So <laughs> no, you just push the button. Oh, why would we cheat? Yeah, why, how is it in our? Uh, how do we benefit from that? And whether you why would we? Yeah, why 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 would we benefit? And then and, and and you know, I sit there and I listen to people, and they say, you know, love is love is blind. So is hate. And the way they painted Trump yes. as hate, this pure vicious yeah, form yeah. at the mouth of hate, it makes people blind. So I, I would say, listen, I can care less if Trump won or Biden won, but I will say this. You're going to tell me the band that's selling out stadiums and arenas, sometimes two arenas in one day. So Metallic is out there running against Foreigner, who's playing, who's trying to make a comeback. I'll bet yet, Lover Boy. They're against Lover Boy, and Lover Boy is playing the mall parking lot. And there's about 200 people. No disrespect to Lover Boy. I loved your music. And I thought I loved their interview. Yes, I me too. Um, but you're telling me I love them. You got more votes than Metallica, who just went and sold <laughs> like 40 million tickets. You're telling me, Jim, you are not allowed. To, you are not allowed to ask these questions. And it's not a question. It's a you know, fact. It's a fact. No, but, you're, but, but you're being you're using something that is is not. You're not allowed to use your own thinking logic. You can't do your own research. But but what? Look at but you. But the brilliance of that is how some will go. They won't hear what I just said or what you're saying. They'll just go, "You're a right wing Trump. Love it." No, I'm just common well, look, sense. You have to you have to look at this. Look, if you if you have a thinking mind. You have to you have to allow yourself to question things. That's the one thing about comedians and why comedians are the uh, you know I can't say we are the best journalists, but I would say we are the ones uh, the independent who have no backing by the pharmaceutical industry. We have no we don't have we have independent funding. We're funded by our fans. Correct. We're funded by people who come pay to see us. So I think we have the ability to speak our minds. And I say that yeah, and to question. The thing is, you are only allowed to question the Democrats say you're only allowed to question the election if you are a democrat and you control it and you underestimated how many votes you needed to get under and how many ballots you needed to find to to swing the election in your favor they underestimated and trump and that's why they didn't let that happen again with biden in my opinion in my opinion it seems too. to be i mean that's to me i don't care what anyone yeah because i just yeah. don't think there's I'll no excitement for biden. there's no excitement for biden and there's been a history of cheating in all elections all elections there's, i mean like nixon to his credit, and I know Nixon's truly the last progressive. He got a bad the, rap. The, the last progressive president. Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the last progressive president that the United States had was uh, was Richard Nixon. He put in Title IX for women could have sports, so that if you were um, a university and you were making money of, of, off selling, you know, football or whatever, you, you and you had the football program, you had to have a, another program, an equal program, to, for women. Wow. And that was Nixon to put that. In. 
Nixon put in the Environmental Protection Agency. That was Nixon, a Republican, ah. a true progressive. Nixon wanted to put in, wanted to put in universal health. This is before everybody was sick. I remember this. You know, when the United States could afford it. And the person who opposed it and later regretted it was Robert Kennedy's uncle, Teddy Kennedy, Edward Kennedy. Mm. And that was, he wanted the credit for it. And he regretted that to this, you know, to his dying day, I hope. So going back to like the cheating that happened and Nixon knew he was informed the next day after he lost the election to Nick, to Kennedy in 1960. Uh, uh, the next day they said, we can fight this. We know they cheated in Illinois. And Nixon, to his great credit, said it is more important the peaceful transfer of power than any one man's political ambitions. Mm. Now, that is a great American. Now, you know, he was he he ended up he wasn't involved in the in the break in at Watergate. Right. He was involved in cover up right. and, and did did resign for that in, in disgrace. But. You can't take away the fact that he was really, truly the last progressive president we had and what he did, you know? So, you know, and I know he, he allowed Kissinger to expand the war and blah, 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 and it was terrible. But um, I don't know what got me on that track. It was just Democrats and Republicans. So can we have a fair election next time? I don't know. I think we're going to have to do as much. The Republicans are going to have to learn. I mean, they didn't learn. They didn't say, they didn't do as much hard work because I, I believe it was the Republicans who wanted the, originally wanted ballots, mail it in. They just have to work harder. They have to use the same system and they have to show up with as many ballots. I mean, it was very interesting and very telling when Biden said, you know, we have to wait. It's not done yet. Let's wait. You know, there are fan, there are vans of, of ballots still, still out there. Two in the morning, to be three in the morning. Yeah. I, Four in the morning. In the morning. I know. Well, but you are a conspiracy theorist. Oh, big I time. never said anything. I, you, oh, 100%. you are a bad I didn't, I didn't say any of this and I don't agree to any of it. We're just discussing this. Yeah. And I hope that when the New York times covers this, those <laughs> assholes. I could give a rat's ass. Do you think there's anybody that truly trusts New York times anymore or the Washington, but do, does anyone trust any paper anymore? I don't think so. I think that it's, a I think it's an extreme minority I, at this point. I would hope so. But the power that it does have within its uh, reinforcing a political echo chamber that is the uh, you know the liberal intelligentsia the illiberal intelligentsia it is a very powerful tool it is it still is it still is unfortunately the ben, ben bradleys of the 1970s when we, you and i watched all the president's men and were like mm, get those bad politicians those days are gone <laughs> right. because now as glenn greenwald who was you know, i think the last great journalist that we have now along with matt tb who's great um you have um, really people who, in journalism now, who come from wealth and who reinforce the government's talking points and be big business, and they don't really speak for the people. They hated rich people, the jur the journalists. You know, when you and I were kids, they they like they it was it was really the press that sunk Nixon. Whereas you have something that's way worse, than, in my opinion, than oh what my Nixon God. did with Biden. It's horrifying. I mean, like, and the, Dem the, Gra the Democrats, their defense is, well, yeah, his son sold the influence of his father uh, I, to China and to the Ukraine and made money, but the dad didn't do it. That's not a defense. That's an admission. But this, you're right. <laughs> you well, what this, here's what blows my mind. When things started going down, I saw the video of Biden bribing, talking about bribing the prosecutor to get fired in Ukraine. I I sent it to a publicist who we both know. Yeah. And yeah. she said, I don't know if I, where, where'd you get that video? I'm like, I, what? There's no editing here. It's it's as plain as day. He says yeah. you fire that prosecutor or you don't get your ten or or you, you don't get your one billion. You don't get your money. It was like ten. It was like ten million, something crazy like that. And the guy was a prosecutor looking into his son and his businesses and the dirty work going over there. And I'm like, so yeah, how do you, if you know this, if me and you did this, we'd be carted off away right now. So how yes. do we sit here and still watch as a public, this undeniable fact 
in play on video. It's on video. And yeah, but they, they when you control the media, and it's not control the media, but when the, when ninety five percent of academia is is of one partisan political party. And when you have roughly, I mean, I can't say that about media because I don't know, but I'm going to say it anyway. I would say 95% of people in media uh, are, are also um, beholden to the illiberal, liberal, um, you know, talking points. And, Agreed, and they're yeah. in that little echo chamber. I mean, it's owned, I mean, the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos. I mean, that's a, he's a liberal. And then the, he is a, uh, uh, and then you have uh, proven that uh, Facebook, which is very influential, and, you know, we, you're talking about, a you know, a billion people on there, oh. um, maybe more. Yeah. So you have uh, the, and then the, this and he is in the pocket because he knows where power is and he's going to have to be in the power. I mean, it was it was a short break in power. But um, uh, so you have, um, you know, what's his face from uh, um, from Facebook? Yeah. What happened? Zuckerberg. He's, he's in their pockets. And, and, and it's you have to go. That's business and that's power. But. You, what you would hope is that the fourth estate, which is the a, a really the segment of power, we have the judicial, we have the legislative, we have the executive, and we also have the, the fourth estate. You have the, the press. When the press no longer is questioning the powers, the executive, the judicial, the legislative, when they no longer represent the common man and finding out uh, malfeasance and instead attack the common man like Jim Brewer – a good comedian or Rob. touring this country or Rob Schneider <laughs> touring, right? right. Or, or me, you know, and, um, selling our wares in different, um, places that'll have us. Um, I, I do think you're going to be, I do think we're in trouble and I do think the emergence of, um, podcasts like yours, uh, like Russell Brand used to have like Joe Rogan, like Joe Rogan, um, they can't do anything about him yet, but I guarantee you they've done some digging. It was four years that they were working on Russell Brand. Yes. Until they found four people, none of them public. That's right. I'm not defending him. I don't I'm know not defending about him I'm either, saying, but what I watched was actors recreating what anonymous people said. Correct. And I'm not I'm just saying that that's a fact that that's what they decided to do. I've never seen recreations of actors Neither. recreating. In, in a, an attack piece, which was what it was. And it was, it was successful. So you have the ability for very powerful groups of industries to shut down the world and, and that have, I mean, if Hitler knew that I don't need to attack Poland, I just need to control the media behind Poland and I could save a lot of money on oil, save a lot of money on tanks and I don't have to bring my, if I can just control their media, if I can just control everything and control their government and then I, we don't really need to attack, do we? So it's just a new way to fleece the public and they can just, it was a gigantic transfer of wealth. Mm. It was the biggest theft in human history. Historians, if we have history after this, will look back at, at this as the greatest plunder in human history yep. I, for what it is. If we if we are allowed to tell that story, and if historians are allowed to ask the question, what happened between in the Western world between and the planet in twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three, was this a precursor for more things to happen? Was this a precursor to nineteen to the nineteen twenties, where another authoritarian rise came to power, and the incredible amount of human beings that were slaughtered after that in world war ii mm. so i think we i think it's behooves us to get ourselves in a position of power whereas to ask questions um of our leaders and to um make sure that um our voices are heard and to make sure that they don't fucking disarm us and <laughs> that's it don't disarm us and keep them accountable do not take the foot off the pedal of but of there's no accountability they were confronting all of them it's only it's only public shame that's all we're just shaming fauci well that's that's the only revenge we get i get to make fun of him you get to make fun of him right like what does that do who that's cares the, that's, 
That's the thing he's gone. He's gone. I mean, and the next guy's already lined head. up and they already filled his pockets. And he, he like an agent is getting percentage. I don't know that for a fact. Why is it? Before you put up fat checks, I don't know. Well, Just, well, he does get he does get money. They all from, get money. Um, this all comes from money. You know, so, it all comes the root. They say it's the love of the money. It's money. No. If no money existed, money, money, money. I highly no agree and highly There's, feel none of this would happen if morals were and, yeah. and if god and morals was the front line for all thought process 90 something percent of this would never happen which now i see why they took god out why they took out why they create all these religions why they create everything to just stop you from the deep part of what lies in all of us i think inside all of us we're such beautiful spirits and if we keep going back in time, this is what I tell you, you gotta go to Africa, you gotta get to see some tribes. Okay, You're gonna yeah. get a whole different, when you see how they understand that the spirit of life is through everything. And then we're all oh, yeah. designed for a reason, which is why gender breaks my heart. We're designed for a reason. You're not smart. No, God doesn't make, God doesn't make You're not smarter than it, the creation yeah. that of what created you and what came out. Um, that I don't know how that's going to happen, but well, the hope for healing evil. I mean, you have to mean. It's, it's I will tell you evil. one of the strange. It really one is. Of the, one of, it, it is, but one of the strange things about this is, um, for me, was you know when they do take your work away, um, when they when they take it away, you're you're asked, you know, what else you got? How are you gonna are you gonna give up now? Do you apologize, Never. even though you know it's the truth? never or do you where do you go and 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 why is this and what is happening and i i it, it led me back to god and it, it it led me to god from a place of human evil yep that i couldn't i couldn't understand um i mean i can understand it and i read the science I, I, I mean i read you know what i understand of the science and 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 i read books you know and you look at like trying to heal human evil um and and then you realize well if there really is evil and I go, well, that's evil, then there must be, there must be an opposing force to it, God. And that God certainly uh, must allow this and, but it's not an even exchange. And, and that's the thing that I, that brought me back to God mm -hmm. and to the idea of the, of the atheists is that they want us to believe that there's, this is all just an accident that we're living in a stupid world <laughs> where things just bump. Exactly. And, and out of this stupidity is this glorious accident that came of human intelligence right. and that that is an exception to the to the dumb ever expanding idiotic stupidity of of this gigantic thing called the universe right. and we're the exception right. no we didn't come into the world as alan watts says we came out of it if there is intelligence it is not separate than us it's endemic in this universe that there is intelligence there is thing called love it's the power of everything. That's right. And there is a thing called compassion. And if there, it does exist in the universe because you found it in other people. That's right. This is a real thing. That's right. And this is the essence of God and love, which is the strongest thing. So so why is there human evil? And is it an equal thing? And it isn't. And I would led from God and I and I'd asked, um, I had to ask, what is this? And um you have to know that God does have a plan and God didn't just allow Eden to just be in Eden. Right. God wants things to happen. God wants to test us. So God put an apple and go, don't eat that. Whatever you do, don't, <laughs> you better not because there's knowledge. You be just stay. Don't eat that. Don't because that, so God wants things <laughs> to happen. He sets things into play because what we have, sets things into play play what this is is a gigantic play mm. a play that is working out to test us it is the drama the laughter it is the crying it is the drama it is to see this life that we uh, this universal experiment in consciousness which is us that's why our eyes point out not in because we are here speaking for the universe created from this universe to experience it from a deeper place of consciousness and everything has consciousness but it's a more 
primitive form of consciousness than human beings are. We have come to this point where we're allowed to think that we're a separate us than everything else. But we're not. We're part of the whole thing. And that's something that we have to learn and teach our kids what we're here to do. And so, but then why is this this evil? Why, why are we allowed to these things to happen? What is it? And I would just go to a modern theologian by the name of Father Ripperger, Catholic priest and a good one. Okay. I know the Catholic Church been tried to destroy, they tried to destroy the Catholic Church too. But um, the reason I'm a follower of the Catholic Church now, now is because it's the closest to the actual teachings and words of Jesus Christ. So he said, Jesus already won. Relax. This is just a mop up mission. <laughs> that's simple. and then I have to go back to that's that's Ripperger, Father Ripperger, and uh, <laughs> good friend like Kevin James. And then you have to go to the, the my favorite um, Zen Buddhist Catholic. Um, uh, uh, was he Catholic? He's Presbyterian. I don't know Presbyterian, but Alan Watts, and he said a wonderful thing, quoting, which I, I think would be a good thing to leave your audience with. Let's do it. Is the, the um, how they teach uh, good and evil to Hindu children so when they're very young. It's a game of dice. And basically they roll the dice and the perfect roll is a four, which represents a square, which everything is balanced on all four sides. That's the best roll you can get, perfection. Now, the second best roll is a three or a triangle where you have two positive lines and a negative line. And that's, so it's basically, you know, two thirds positive, one third negative. And then the, the, the second worst roll or the third best is a two, which are two parallel lines that cancel each other out. And the worst roll is a one, which is a single line reflecting off nothing. Mm. And it's just, it's a negative line. Now, if you roughly count up the negatives and the positives in that, uh, in that mathematical equation of good and evil, you would say it's two thirds positive, one third negative. It's not equal. They don't cancel each other out. Right. But there is evil. There is enough bad to make the game worth the candle. So that evil is not going to win, but it's going to give good a run for its money <laughs> and challenge you. And it's going to try to cancel guys and, and challenge people with big hearts like Jim Brewer, but they're not going to win. Rob, I I can't thank you enough, man. This was, I've never gone this long on a podcast. I've never, I'm, I'm not <laughs> even kidding you. I would have talked, I, I could have sat and listened for another five hours, but um, I can't thank you enough. Thanks. You're, you're an incredible human being. Thank so you. smart, you too, so deep, so beautiful. Um, oh. I'm glad, I'm almost glad I never knew you way back then. And this is, <laughs> This is how I get to know you because I thank God there's people like you. I really do. I can't thank God enough. And I'm super blessed you came along today and um, enjoy your news, live news thing today. Yeah, I'm going to do it. And I don't know how I got sucked into this, but I think it's important to like not attack people and try yeah. to come from a place of peace it's hard. and then and see what happens. It is hard. But that's but my once, move now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, because I was so angry about that. So was I. For so long, and that's why. So was I. And when I and I, and and I felt like when I was able to talk to you, I felt like if I if I wish I had somebody to talk to me at that time who was a comedian has been through this, and it's like God, please. And I'm just I'm happy that you took my call and that um, that things calmed down for you. Yeah, and that you didn't get sucked into a trap where it got even worse for yep. you. And people love you. They do, and they respect you. So, and I'm one of them. And and it's, I'm glad we became friends this Me way. Too. It's meant to be. Me too. I will. <laughs> I can never thank you enough. That was a beautiful thing you did. I will never forget it. And um, I hope that my thanks, to whatever I can do, no. and make uh, to give it back to you. Um, I hope it happens. So much, well, much love to you and your family. Thank you. Likewise, you stay safe and let's do some gigs together one of these days. When you're ready. Tell some jokes. I'm all ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. go. All right. Okay. Lots of love, buddy. Rob, you take care. You too. There you go, Rob Schneider. And I highly recommend if uh, you check out all the stuff that Rob does. And this is why I love having people like Rob on. 
you, the audience, only see one side of someone. You know, if someone sees something to me, they go, oh, you're a this or you're, and they label. We're in such a world of labeling where if we just take the time to, to not care about what their business is, if you didn't, if you didn't know what Rob did for a living and we just sat and talked, you can't tell me you weren't educated, fascinated, uh, and intrigued by the conversation by Rob, and nor would you even thought that he can go in such great detail and such great depth of knowledge in this conversation we just had. And I'm begging you to start doing that with some of the people around you. So we'll see you next time on the Bruniverse. Uh, that was tremendous. Rob Schneider, thank you again. And uh, we'll see you next week on the Bruniverse. Don't forget, check out some of the tour dates, jimbrewer.com. I'll see you in da um, Dunedin. I'll see you in Deltona. And uh, just go to the dates, and we'll see you on there. All right? Safe journeys. Mike, have a good one. Check out the entire two-hour episode featuring Rob Schneider, uncut and uncensored, only at jimbrewer.com slash Patreon. This is Jim Brewer, and I got my own Patreon page, and hopefully you'll check it out. Live comedy concert streamed once a month. Weekly, you host your own podcast, and you interview me. Early access to the Bruniverse podcast every single week, and I have bonus footage and bonus segments. I promise you I'm not going to let you down. Go check out my official Jim Brewer Patreon page, and I'll see you there. He was riding the line. What is that, Mike? Is that me, Mike? Are we good? Because Rob froze. No, it's, that's on Rob. Yeah. Okay. That's on me, baby. That's on me, baby. <laughs>